the hosts of Access Hollywood and World of Dance, our next guest is always talking to the biggest names in Hollywood. And now his podcast, he's getting so close to his guests by having deep, intimate conversations. We're excited to chat with him. Please welcome entertainment journalist and host, Scott Evans. Scott, come on! What up? What up? What up, Scott? Look at y'all looking looking all good and stuff. Okay. No. You know, no. we're always no. you're always talking to us and it's just nice to have you on our show for a change. So welcome, Scott. And I heard yeah. that you did a very unusual thing. When you were about 14 years old, you purchased your first car. Is that true? Yeah, in the state of Indiana, you can't legally drive a car until you're 16. But at 14, I had saved up money from babysitting. It's funny, as a kid, I was like, I guess, the most responsible friend. (laughs) And I actually got paid to babysit my friends. No joke. And so I saved all this money and found this car. It was like my dream kind of situation. Four Taurus SHO. Put the down payment on it. They (laughs) tow it to our driveway because I wasn't old enough, of course, to drive the car. My mom gets home and this beautiful car is sitting in the driveway. And she was like, who's, who car is it? I was like, oh, that's me with the keys. Like, that's me. She was like, boy. With no license. How did... How did you, when did you, who's? And so it was, it was a kind of outrageous situation. But again, I was 14. So I would just get in the car and play music and drive it up and down the driveway. <laughs> so I just Amazing. reverse and drive, reverse and drive. That's hilarious. You know, that sounds about right to me. That is so funny. Um, Scott, look at, listen, many people can say that Taylor Swift's music changed their lives, but apparently and literally, she changed your life. What is this story? I want to know. Okay, so this is kind of crazy. My first gig for Access Hollywood um, was in May of uh, 2015, I believe. And I was just... I got this phone call. I was like, hey, what are you doing on Thursday? And I was like, uh, who is it? <laughs> uh, it was the EP of, of Access Hollywood. And I was like, oh, I'm doing whatever you need me to do on Thursday. Okay. And so we had this it was an exclusive with Taylor Swift. It was supposed to be a five-minute interview. And if you've ever had a conversation with Taylor, you know that she's about business, but she's got a great personality. So you can kind of get lost in that a little bit, right? She's got plenty to talk about. We talked, it was supposed to be a five minute interview. We talked for 20 minutes. And at the end of the interview, she stood up and she goes, oh my God, she comes over, she grabs my hand and she was like, did you get what you needed? Cause I was just, I've never had that much fun in an interview. And all oh. I could think was, wow. are we still rolling? Like, are, okay. <laughs> are we, did, are people gonna know that this is what Taylor Swift so said? Good. Right? And then her yes. publicist uh, yes. shortly after sent an email to some of the producers at Access Hollywood and were like, this dude, anytime you want to have a conversation with Taylor, we're down. And uh, yeah, I've been working with Access Hollywood ever since. Um, But we want to talk about your podcast too, because it's called So Close and it's just, I want to know why the name and tell us about it. So Close is the name because I feel like so many of us, especially this year, have felt like they were so close to a dream and quarantine Mm -hmm. maybe dashed that feeling uh, of accomplishment right away. Uh, Or you felt like you were so close to giving up on something and then one thing happened and it changed all that. And so the the idea behind the the podcast is that I would be able to to share the stories of triumph, not just accomplishment, right? That we would be able to get kind of in the, the nitty gritty of what you were listening to, what music you what you had, what you were praying for, what you meditated on, what advice you had, those moments, those things that contributed to people um, in the success when it could have gone a different way. And so, you know, I've had guests like Cynthia Erivo. Um, think about this last year. She was the, the youngest. She was a double nominee for Harriet, yeah. music yeah. and performance. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. She was on track to be the, the youngest EGOT ever the pressure that one might feel, you know, going into that Oscar night. She told me that though the, her whole dream and really the biggest dream for her that night was performing the song that she had co-written 
on the and Oscar she stage. she killed it. So regardless That's of what happened as far as the murder. statue was concerned, she was walking out of that thing a winner. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so right. to know that those are some of the things that people are going through and that you can... Yeah also feel some of the similarities in your own life it was like this was a this was these were conversations i was already having with friends and celebrities right it was time right. to share these so that we could all come up you know what i mean yeah yes yeah. on your on one of your podcast episodes you actually shared how as a dark-skinned black person in this country and as you said the darkest person in your family you had yeah. to learn to love your skin so when did you actually begin to love the skin that you're in I'm gonna be honest with you, Adrian. It's 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 something that you you, as a brown skin person in this country, I think it's something that is a constant work in progress. You know what I mean? We are yeah. we are wow. bombarded with images of what beauty is and what it looks like and what it what is acceptable. And as a young black man, especially in my family, it never felt like I was. None of my family members ever made me feel like I was less than or an outsider or anything like that. But as you're a kid, you're looking around and you're like, hmm, yeah, uh -huh. you know. And so it's something that I'm, I'm continuing to work on. I'm countering the messages a lot of times that, that, that you see. Mm. But uh, Black yes. is King was so powerful to me because it was like, man, here, here Black people are in all of our shades and all of it matters and all of it is important. Right. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, the decision for me to even lock my hair this year as Black Lives Matter reached a, a fever pitch after the death of George Floyd. You know, I wanted to make sure that people, when they looked at me on our shows, that they didn't just see this funny, fun guy who happened to be brown, but that they were looking at a black person in America, that there would be no yes. denying, you can't hide. <laughs> you can't I hide. I love it. I love it. You might it. be able to blur you your eyes and be like, so oh, well. Well, you know, he's really funny. But this... <laughs> And I the love comments it. that I got Scott, from, from other people with dreadlocks you. was in, uh, wildly encouraging. But some of the messages I got with people, cut your hair. It's unbecoming. It's not professional. It doesn't look good wow. on you. It was like, oh, so you were the reason why I'm doing this. You were the reason why right. I did this. There you you go, are the right? reason why. Because you, you need go. to get hit to the fat. And this is what it is. Okay. Boo. Right. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Scott, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. His yeah. podcast, So Close, premieres new episodes every Wednesday on all major podcast platforms. And, of course, you can catch Scott on Access Hollywood nightly. Check your local listings.